In today's video, we'll be painting up a bandit from the Pathfinder Battles WizKids range. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to be chucking some PVA glue onto the base. I've already attached it to the base, and I'm just going to be dipping it here and some sand that I've just gotten from my driveway um, to give the base a bit more of a texture because um, I want the bandit to be sort of uh, skulking through the woods, something like that. You've just sort of spotted him with the pose he's got. So uh, I think giving them some stand and a bit more texture and a bit more environment to the base is going to really help sell that effect. So now with that base all completely dried up and primed, we can start moving on. So starting off with some barbarian flesh here. And of course we want to use this for our bandit skin. So giving a nice light coat over, waiting for it to dry and then coming over with a second coat. Now remember all the paints uh, that I apply on are all to thin down with just a little bit of water. Um, to make it run smoother into the, the cracks and the crevices and stuff like that. So now with all his skin all painted up, we're going to come in now with some khaki. And for this, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be placing some on his pants here. Khaki is a good colour um, for, for just sort of a generic uh, pants style clothing, uh, either that or a brown or a black, whatever you feel like here. But I didn't want it to go with a really dark colour. I want to have this bandit be a little bit more bright and stand out looking. So with those pants complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some cavalry brown. Now cavalry brown is a very red uh, brown, so we're going to be using this to be painting his uh, undershirt here, a little bit of uh, leather armor he has on him. We want to be painting that up with the leather brown, giving it a nice uh, pop of color on there. Because uh, like I said, I don't want this to be just a generic sort of bandit who's all covered in black and grey robes. I want him to be a little bit more standout. He's a little bit more showboaty, especially with his little eye patch he's got on. So I want to reflect that with a bit more brighter colours than I'd usually apply for, just a generic sort of bandit. Okay, so now with his leather armour complete, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some green skin. And I'm going to be using this to be painting his little, uh, what do you call it, mantle or little cloak he has over him here in the nice bright green. Um, now this green is a little bit thin uh, of mine, as you can see here. I've put a little bit too much water in here, and it's uh, sort of making the brush strokes very visible. So I will have to come back over definitely with another layer or two to tidy that up. But that's a good thing about using multiple layers, as it'll eventually get rid of those streak marks. Okay, so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to come in now with some ivory, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting in our bandit's eye. Now he only got one eye because he's got a little eye patch over the other. So being careful here with a nice fine tip brush, I'm just brushing in the area of the eye. Now I'm being a little bit rough with it here. I just want that whole eye socket region all painted in. And then I'm going to come back with our original flesh tone color and then just tidy it up to make it look like a proper eye. Okay, so now with that eye completed and tidy up, it's now time for the tricky bit and not making our bandit here look like a derpy bandit and just trying to get that eye in there. I'm using a very fine tip brush to do that and I'm just going to be dotting in the pupil here very carefully. Um, you could alternatively use a, a drawing pin or uh, just any sort of needle you've got on hand with just a dot of black glue, uh, black glue, black paint I mean sorry, and place that in there dabbing it to get that nice dot effect but I want to work on my uh, brush skills a little bit and of course, we also want to make sure we paint in that eye patch as well with that same black too. Okay, so now with those eyes in, hopefully it doesn't look too derpy, we're going to come back in with some ivory now. And what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to be painting the sleeves of his uh, undershirt here. So we want that a nice uh, bright white. So giving that a good overall covering. Now, if you have spilled a little bit of paint over here, it'll probably take an extra couple of layers. You can see I've spilled a little bit of paint on the underside while getting in that leather armor. So it's going to take a couple of layers to get rid of that, but that's a good thing about thinning down the paint. Okay, now with his white sleeves complete, we're going to come back in with some black now. And what we're going to be doing with the black is we're just going to be painting up his boots. Just some nice generic sort of black boots. And just a, giving it a good overall coverage and being very, very careful not to paint on to his pants we've got here because it'll be quite hard to tidy it up with the khaki over top. So just being careful with where we're using the brush. Okay, now with his boots all painted up, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some charred brown. And the charred brown we're going to be using to be painting up his, uh, all his leather straps he's got on him. So you can see he's got one big belt across him, just across his chest here. He's got a whole bunch of belts across 
his uh, waist, holding his um, little potion that he's got on him as well. So we want to make sure we paint all those up with the charred brown and just being very, very careful uh, not to go over anywhere. But we're still in the base coating stage, so we can tidy up at any point if we need to. And we also want to be painting up the gloves that the bandit is wearing as well in the exact same color. So don't forget to do those too. Okay, so with that strap and those gloves complete, we're going to come in now with some fur brown. And the fur brown is sort of a, a light, ready brown as well. And I'm going to be using this to do his uh, hair on him as well. Now this bandit has a little moustache. So another good practice here to be doing my uh, fine brushwork skills on to really concentrate on using the point of my brush so hopefully it works out all right but we also want to do the hair as well to match his mustache and we're just giving a good overall coat and trying to avoid too much of the area where he's got that uh, eye patch on as well okay so now with his hair all painted in I'm going to come in now with some deep blue and deep blue is going to be a good uh, color to break up all of these uh, neutral colors we've sort of got and we want that nice big pop of color and I'm just going to be doing that with this little uh, potion bottle he's carrying now I'm not quite sure if it's a potion bottle or maybe just a water skin but I'm going to make it as a he's carrying a potion bottle with him so nice big bright blue attract the eye from a little bit of place and break up some of uh, the color we've got around this area as well okay so now with our blue completed we're going to come in now with some leather brown and for the leather brown all we're going to be doing is just using it to be painting up all the rest of the straps that he has on him here just across his waist he's got about five or six of these straps so being careful to make sure we cover all those straps and don't paint over anywhere we don't want that paint but it is okay to tidy up because we are still in that base coating stage so if you need to switch to a finer brush to really get into all the areas where the, the straps and belts are don't be afraid to do that okay now with all those belts completed what we're going to be doing now is moving on with some gun metal so of course for our gun metal, we're going to be just applying this everywhere that our miniature has any metal detail. So, of course, he's got his uh, big dagger here. He's got all the little uh, buckles on his belt. He actually has just a little bit of armor on the back of his gloves where he's got sort of a metal plate on there. So we want to make sure we get those in as well. And, of course, I'm being very, very careful to just get the actual belt buckle itself. As well as he also seems to have uh, two metal stakes in here. I guess he can also hunt vampires as well. Um, so we want to make sure we get those in with the metal as well. We can say that there's some nice silver stakes just in case this bandit comes across any vampires. So unusual detail to have in there, but we want to make sure we get those in as well. Okay, so now we've got all the metal painted up. We're going to come in now with some dirt spatter. And dirt spatter we're just going to be applying all over the base. So we want to make sure we get it uh, into all those cracks and crevices with all that uh, sand that I had on here. So you might want to thin this down just a little bit more than you thin down your uh, paints or painting on the miniature just so it really does get into all those little crevices between all the little grains of sand and rocks on there okay now with the basing part completed we can now move on to some washes so starting off with some flesh wash and of course we want to be using our flesh wash to be covering over our skin and as well as i'm just going to be using it over here as well because flesh wash has a bit of a red tone in it so it'll bring it out a little bit more of that red color in his uh, hair with the fur brown we've got in there too so I'm doing this and just being a little bit careful to avoid uh, getting it into the eye because I don't want to taint all that color as well okay now with that flesh wash all dried up we're going to come in now with some Agrax Earthshade now Agrax Earthshade we're basically going to be using over the entirety of the rest of the miniature except for anywhere where we have that metal detail so we're going to be applying this pretty liberally and all over the miniature giving that good coverage everywhere we possibly can as well don't forget to do the base as well we want some across there giving some nice uh texturing in there too so everywhere just sort of being ha haphazardly placing it on everywhere but we are still remembering to uh, avoid too much of the pooling we don't want any pooling in any areas where we don't so we've got some nice big nasty brown spots all over the miniature so just being a little bit careful and minding where those spots are happening while you're doing this okay so now we have that Agrax earth shade all dried up and we can start moving on with some known oil so known oil of course we're going to be using this over our metallics because i love the effect it gives on metallics it really brings them out nice and uh, detailed with having that nice sort of uh, metal how would you say it uh sort of just it really makes it look like a realistic uh, metal and shadows and stuff with that known oil 
on there. So just applying it to all those middle areas, like I said. Then once we have all those completed, we can now move on to some highlighting steps. So starting off with ivory here, all I'm going to be doing is going back over the areas where we had our uh, white undershirt and that ivory color placed and just being mindful of where we're putting it. So we're putting it basically every, basically applying it back on like normal, but we are avoiding all the areas where there is folds and we've got those super deep recesses. We want to avoid those areas because they're not in the sunlight and we want to uh, give off that effect like there's a nice bright sun hitting the miniature. And again, we're going to be doing some more highlighting and this time we're going to come in with some green skin, which is our original color we had for our green. And the good thing about that, since the wash is all darkened everything down, coming back in with the original color is going to make a, a difference and make it look like it's the natural highlight of the color where we don't have any of those shadows. So this one's got some nice big flat pieces again and a few folds in here. So we want to be careful to uh, avoid some of those folds so we can look where those uh, where that sunlight would naturally be hitting on the miniature to place the stuff and see just the rim around his neck and stuff like that that we want to be aiming for while doing this. And with our next stage of highlighting we're going to come in with some khaki here and we're going to be just applying it to the areas where the sun's naturally going to hit again and this time it's basically just going to be on the top of the leg here just on this little edge and us on the other one as well here we've got a little bit there in the light. Now you can go as much or as little as you want uh, with this but I'm just going to be just applying it where the light would naturally sort of hit and giving that uh, very bright effect just on those parts. Okay so now there's just one more step that I sort of want to highlight and bring out and we're going to use chainmail silver to do that which is a very bright uh, silver color and we're just going to be doing it over all the metallics that are would be hitting it in the sunlight and catching those bright colors that we uh, want to achieve here. So uh, with all of this complete, this is as far as I'm going to go with the highlights, you can take this as far or as little as you want, but I'm going to base up the miniature here, uh, adding on some uh, more grass, tufts and stuff like that to give off a cool effect, so I can't wait to see you after the final reveal. And with that, we have finally finished painting up our Bandit from the Pathfinder Battles WizKids Miniatures line. And as you can see, just by changing up those colors from uh, those very browns and grays, the, what you'd expect the Bandit to be, coming up with some of these slightly brighter colors, and that we've given him a more charismatic sort of feel, like he's going to just mug you from the front rather than try and stab you in the back. So I hope this has been helpful for you, whether you want to follow along with me, or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. I'd like to thank you all for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.